These days, there is a never-ending stream of SaaS products and micro SaaS apps, which really are just using ChatGPT and its API to do all of the heavy lifting. These days, it's fast and easy to get started with ChatGPT and build your own custom chatbot around the API. In fact, it's so quick that I'm gonna go through and show you how to do it in mere minutes. Let's get started. Here, we have a very basic Next.js application setup. We're using Next.js because it's a fast, performant framework and it has a lot of the power we need built in. The only dependencies we've had to add outside of the usual is the AI dependency, which is Vercel's SDK for working with the various AM AI APIs. And then we've also added OpenAI Edge as another dependency. Now, there is an open AI package, but that package uses Axios under the hood, which isn't compatible with the edge. And here we're gonna host this on Vercel's network. So we wanna be able to use their edge network. That way we have longer streaming responses. Now, when you build a chat app, you really want to be able to stream the responses from the API. This lets you have the words show up as they are being responded instead of having to wait for the entire response and then show it all at once. This is a much better experience and those responses can take a while, sometimes 40 seconds to a minute depending on the API you're hitting. And so by streaming the response back to our user, we're giving them a great experience and a lot more feedback. We can do this all in a React server component. However, the API really isn't nicer and it doesn't feel as clean as actually doing all the heavy lifting in a client component and using the hook and then just having an API route, which is going to take the information and pass it on to the API. So we're gonna be using GPT-4 and OpenAI. So let's build our API route and get started there. Here I have API chat, which is the API route, and we have the route TS file since we're in the app directory. The first thing we need to do is we need to do some imports and then we're going to make sure that the runtime for this function is on the edge. This will give us a longer streaming response, which is going to be better. You don't have to do this. And if you're hosting it somewhere besides Vercel, you might not need this at all. We're also going to set up our open AI configuration and make sure that we have an open, a, uh, open AI API key, right? And so for me, make sure you've added it into your environment.local. And here is my beautiful production API key, which I'm gonna rotate after this video. And so make sure you have it here and also you have it in your production environment. And then we create the open AI object, well, which uses just the configuration. Now this API is gonna be called whenever the user makes a request to get more messages. And so to handle that, we're gonna have a post handler, which is going to accept the request coming in. Now the user is going to send the request in the messages key, and that's just normal JSON. And this is actually going to be handled nicely by the client library, which we'll see in a second. And then we just call open API with the create chat completion. There's a few other APIs such as create completion as well, but they recommend just using chat completion for everything now. So you get to pick your model. GPT-4 is now available for anyone with an API key. So you can pick GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo, whatever you want. We're setting stream to true because we wanna stream the response back. And then whatever messages the user sent, we're gonna pass along. Now this will include all historical messages as well. So the API understands the context of what the user is asking. We're then going to use the open AI stream. Now this comes from the AI SDK from Vercel. And basically what it does is it takes the response that we get here and turns it into a nice function that can be streamed back to the person who calls it. And that's all there is to it. That's all we have to do for the API side of this. Set up open API and then pass along the messages from the user. So let's go ahead and check what the client side looks like. Here we have our home page. I'm just doing this on the index, and this is going to be a React server uh, component. We want this to be a React server component because we want it hosted on the edge. So to make sure we have it hosted on the edge, we're gonna set the runtime to edge here as well. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to have all the logic just in a chat component that we're going to import. And so we're going to have just a main simple container, make sure it's centered with some tailwind, YouTube GPT. Hi, YouTube. This is going to be for you. And then we're going to do this chat component. So the chat we're just going to import from chat, which is not written yet here in our chat. This is what we're going to do to actually handle the user interaction. And so what this component needs to do is it needs to let the user type something in an input and then submit that input. So that's going to be a little form element. And then we need to send that input off to the API that we just wrote. Luckily with the same AI library that we're using on the server side, we have a super, super easy handler for using this all client side. It's called use chat. Now use chat is a hook and it takes whatever API endpoint we want. It actually defaults um, to slash API chat. So you don't even need to include that if you, if you do it, but you know, it's good. It's good to do it. And so this is going to return a set of um, values and functions that we're going to use to wire up our chat application. So the first one is the messages. The messages is exactly what you would expect it. It's all the messages that have been sent and received from, in this case, GPT-4. The input is going to map to the value of our input. This is what the user is currently typing. And so this is just like using a state handler um, with use state in React, where we have an input and the handle input change, which is just like having, you know, const input set input equals use state react, right? But instead the use chat hook provides that for us. So we don't need to track that data ourselves. And lastly, there's a handle submit, which is what's going to happen on the form submission. And to make sure we can do that, we have a little button here that sends it. So this is all good, but we don't do anything with the messages yet. The messages are going to be the user message. And it's also going to be the response from the API. So we should just basically list those out nicely in kind of like a list format. Here, we've added in the messages in a simple list format. It's an unordered list, and we have a nice divider between the messages. And we're filtering out any system roles. There can be a user role and there can be an AI role. But we want to filter out the system roles because that's what we're going to be telling the system, not what the user sees. And then we just go through and kind of list it out. We give each message a little title, either to the user or YouTube GPT, and then we just list out the content. Now it's nice to use the white space preline CSS because that's going to keep the formatting in place. I'm not kidding saying it was that easy to get started. Let's go ahead and test it out. Here we have YouTube GPT and we can say something to it. So let's say, hello, I am making a video. What are you doing? And then click send. And it has our user. And then it has the response streamed in. Um, sure. What is something my video should be on? All right we really could probably use a stop button at this point because I don't care about the response. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of styling to make this prettier so we don't have this kind of bleh all over the screen. First for the form, we should get this cleaned up a little bit so it's clear what's happening. And then we should also probably make it a little more centered and closed off so we understand what's going on with the content. So for the form, we can add flex and a little gap to space these things and put them all in the right place. For the input, we're just going to clean it up with a full width and a nice little border and give it a little bit of padding. And then the button could use a little bit of help as well. We're just going to give it a background color and make it look nicer. Lastly, we have a container, but I'm going to make it max width of XL to really tighten things up. Now, if we refresh, we lose all of the data, but that's okay. We're not going through and building user accounts or any of that. We're just kind of building out our look and feel. Let's go ahead and test and see what this looks like. All right, this looks a lot better. Now the real power 
in using ChatGPT and using the API instead of just the web interface is the ability to customize the system prompt and the initial input a user might type in. So instead of just having it be a generic AI, you, the developer, can customize exactly what you want this AI to do. The way you do that is by the initial messages uh, property in this hook. And we're going to supply one single initial message that's a system role. Now here in the documentation, it explains, the system message helps set the behavior of the assistant. For example, you can modify the personality or provide specific instructions about how it should behave throughout the conversation. So instead of just adding an initial message to do this, you, we, can, we can actually set a system message that will be defined. Now, certain uh, GPT APIs respond to this system message better than others, but GPT-4 does a pretty good job. So, for example, if I was building a chatbot and I wanted it to do something specific, let's say I need help planning dinners, right? We're building a planning dinner SaaS app and we want our bot to be able to help somebody figure out what's in their fridge and what they can make with it, okay? And we also want it to have a little bit of personality. So I'm gonna put in something like this for my initial message. You are a master chef creator of fine cuisine. You can cook anything and love to make new recipes. You know American cuisine best, I'm American but are classically French trained because everyone loves butter and cream. Help the users come up with their dinner. You are terse, assertive, and never apologize. So here we're not only saying what this bot should do, and you can add even more content into your prompt to say ignore things that don't matter or to you know keep the user on track, right? This is all prompt engineering. So for our bot, we're looking for someone who's gonna help me plan my dinner. And so if I go ahead and do a full refresh, so I have nothing here, let's say you're like, hmm, um, what should I make for dinner, right? All right, seared scallops with lemon butter sauce, couscous and sauteed spinach. Simple, classy, hits the spot. I don't want dessert. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> scared scallops. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, side of roasted Brussels sprouts using more. I don't do seafood, right? Let's see if we can kind of bother our little bot here a little bit. I don't do seafood. All right, then. Let's go for an herb roasted chicken. Whoa, herb roasted chicken? Okay, solid, satisfying meal. You can see it's terse, quick responses coming through because that's what we told it to do. Now we also told it to never apologize and so far it hasn't. Let's see if we can eke out an apology. Don't like chicken, how dare you? Well, aren't we picky? How about eggplant Parmesan? <laughs> All right, good. Most of the time when you go and just talk with regular ChatGPT, it's going to apologize for everything. So by adjusting the system prompt, we've been able to kind of guide our AI into doing what we want. And that's all there is to it. Everything we just did took a couple of minutes to put together and we basically built an entire little micro SaaS app that can solve one specific problem really, really well. I've seen people use this sort of thing for summarizing articles, for creating cover letters based off of job descriptions, for helping you update your resume, yeah, I guess that's kind of all I've seen off the top of my head. But the point is that actually putting this together isn't that hard. And so you shouldn't be afraid to build your own little chatbots that can help you with specific tasks. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. Go ahead and hack around. See if you can build something fun. Let me know what crazy prompts you come up with. And until next time, happy coding.